everyone, welcome to that pillow show. Dan here. <laughs> Mick here. Hello. Um, I feel all. I feel really good. Yeah. For a number of reasons. One, we had our first band rehearsal last night. Yes, we did. It was awesome fun. And uh, yeah, it was great. Um, today, I thought it'd be. I've had a couple of revelations. Um, to do with my AC30. You were proper excited. I was proper excited. And when I walked in here last night and you were schwanging away, it was. Yeah. Man sized yeah. tones. Yeah, yeah. By yeah, the yeah. way, it's Friday night. We are. We're. We're filming some of the last ever episodes that we're going to film from that pedal show because we have found new premises. Our neighbours have. have finally um, laid the hammer down and uh, we've basically got to move, which is fair enough. It's fair enough. It's been a couple of years of making way too much noise. Anyway, we've got some new premises, all very exciting. So we're filming on in, in the night time so that we don't upset them, which is a whole different aesthetic. Do you find that? Yeah. Everything is different. Yeah. It's the end of the week. Yeah. It's, um, I'm not bothered about anything that's happening. Yeah, yeah, so, great. It's, so it's, it's there's freedom. Very, very, exactly. Um, we'd cool. also just like to say hello to our podcast listeners. We've started putting the show out regularly as a podcast. So if you're in your car or on your way to work or doing something where you can hear the audio only, uh, thanks for downloading that. We are going to try and stop doing things like this <laughs> and all the other things. Have you listened to it in your car yet? Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, oh God, we need to stop doing that. And we need to explain a few more things about what's going on because obviously you don't have the visuals. So some of it doesn't make sense. We are going to be doing bespoke podcasts as well, mm -hmm. um, which make more sense for that medium. But as it is, you can get the audio for this show as a podcast as well via your whatever app it is you use, um, chiefly iTunes, Google Play in the States. Uh, we use a, a thing called Podbean. So if you download that app, you can listen to us there. Anyway, hello to our podcast listeners. It's great to have you along. Yes, hello indeed. Okay. Sorry. Massive, no, no, massive, massive no, it's great. Tangent and we haven't very even good, started. Very good. Okay, so I have been doing some um, rehearsals with um, Tin Spirits, um, which is a band I play in uh, with my, one of my childhood heroes, a gentleman called Dave Gregory. Uh, Dave Gregory is the guitar player from XTC and I met him... We've Fire got up. we have got a pedal coming in called the Nigel. Really? Nothing to do with Dave Gregory or XTC. We we played that in Japan. That's very cool. Anyway, so we've I've been doing three, some rehearsals. I've got three beverages tonight. One for my brain. Right. Oh. One for my heart. Do I get a heart beverage? You do. We're gonna to have to go and buy some more though because it's run out. Okay. And uh, one to keep me alive. Very good. Yeah, it's impressive. Um, and another thing. <laughs> Sorry, right. Dave. No, no, you no. were talking about so, Dave. Dave. We were talking about Japan. So, yeah. And I'm all excited because <clears throat> it's Friday night. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> as well you should be. It, has it been a big week for you? Uh, yeah. I, I was talking to my wife uh, yesterday saying the last five Fridays I've been in a supermarket on Friday night. Well, that's all right. It's not. <laughs> there's, nothing, there's nothing right about that at all. On my okay. own, I hasten to add. Right. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Right. Very good. Yeah, no, it's been a massive week for me, and I've been looking forward to this. So, okay. Right. So, AC30. Anyway, we've been doing these rehearsals, and of late, I've been plugging into the AC30 going, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's really good, but. And then. We had the rehearsal and, the, and plugged into the AC30 and the drums start up and the bass start up and I go, and I go that's why I love this amplifier. It's so funny, heard in isolation, lots of people will relate to this. If you've ever played an AC30 and you've plugged in, you've gone, Aye! that's the general reaction. Yep. That's it, a bit spiky, that's yeah. a bit kind of, but I walked in here last night and my brain was in the band mood because yeah. we were the kit was set up um, Tiff, our new bass player, was here, and it was. I was in my, my brain was in band mood. I heard your guitar. In the context of this show, I'd have gone, "Ee, we might need to roll a bit of top off that." Band context, it's like man-sized tones. Oh, I'm going to be hearing man. you all night. It's one. It's a wonderful thing. So great. Now, there's something. There's something that I noticed more, and this is relevant to sort of any amplifier that's got a very 
fast response and, and a decent dynamic, dynamic range when set clean. Mm. All right. Um, what I've noticed is there's a, there's a point on the AC30 and it's that point that's too loud for the bedroom. Yeah. But as soon as it's in the band mix, hey! We just sold a t-shirt. I think I better turn my phone off. <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> I wonder if we could find out who it was. Let's have a look. Uh, thank you, Matt Jansen. Thank you, Matt Jansen. Matt Jansen of Durham, uh, United States, has just bought an All You Need Is Fuzz special edition t-shirt in Heather Navy. Stone White. Thank you. Champion. Thank Matt. you, mate. We really appreciate, appreciate that. that. I'm now going to Actually, turn my phone off. I apologise. No, no. I, and I was going to mention this. Um, we do this thing at the end of the shows where we, we say thank you to everyone. Yeah. And, I, and I, I hope and pray that never comes across as being mechanical or anything because Matt and everyone else has bought a T-shirt and everyone's gone on, um, you know, that's supporting us on Patreon. Patreon and it honestly, we couldn't do it without you guys. So... From the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much. It, we genuinely appreciate it. Couldn't do it without you. Yeah, yeah, we wouldn't be doing it. Yeah, wouldn't be doing it without you. Yeah. So there we go. I'd be back in the supermarket. Uh, I'd still be here on my own, pretending I'm being filmed. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, right. Anyway, there's a point. Still getting kicked out. Right. There's okay. A point anyway, AC thirty. Right. Right. There's this. There's this magical point on the AC thirty where you turn it up, and it's still clean. But the, the amp just has this natural limiting that you, you don't, it's not really obvious, right? But then, you know, when the, the, when the band kicks in, it's, it's, it's that point where, okay, it's loud enough in the band now, and then you hit and it goes. Whoo. So what I've, what I've done... Show me where it is. Right, so what I've done, I've got the, um, the power station hooked up. And if you can hear a, a, a buzzing in the background, it is the power station because it has a fan in it. That's right. Um, so, Which will be sending our new Sennheiser 416s into uh, oh, submission. Really? Okay, all right. Um, so this is, the, this is the clean sound of the amplifier, right? Bridge pickup on the Telecaster. <laughs> No pedals, that's straight into the amplifier. It's such a sound. It's a sound of ages. I, I'm honestly, I'm getting emotional. The just upper being, mid range, oh, the sparkle. It's, just, it's, 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 it's wonderful. Now, the power station is just attenuating a hair. Right. All right. Just only, only so that um, it's not um, so loud. Can I prove that, that by turning the uh, power station off? Uh, yep, just hit the yep. bypass. Yep, go on. Up. Yep. Oh, that's a lot of. <laughs> that's that's why I wanted to test it because I knew he was lying. Because I'm hearing the AC30 going. That's that's <laughs> that is attenuated. Right. Okay. That that is attenuated. I tell you what, then, if you grab the volume and just turn it up a little bit. Oh, sorry. No. 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 I'll have to keep an eye on the levels, but right. go for it. All right. Cool. Fine. Okay. Right. So, but he, here's the point. Setting the amp up at that volume without it being attenuated, all I get is attack. Yeah. I don't get any sustain. I just get this bang and it's it's so quick and fast, but then it just, it's over so quickly. The minute you, you hit that, I watched Simon kind of yeah, yeah. recoil. Yeah, it yeah. was visceral. And it's, yeah. But with the amplifier, just at that point, where it's loud enough for the band, it doesn't. It doesn't sound different. It doesn't. Yeah. It, you know, it's not like so one thing with attenuators that you know we get used to, or you know, is the situation that we're used to seeing them in, is people cranking their amplifiers and getting that really overdriven valve amp tone, but at a quiet level. But what this is doing is it's just taking the edge off, right? And so that it's that. 
gig volume, but at a you know, um, at a tone that we've discussed this before, haven't we? If you, we if have. you haven't watched our attenuators um, episode, please watch that because in that we kind of conclude. Look, attenuators are, are great for knocking to for doing exactly what Dan just said. Mm. For that whole job of taking your hundred watt amp and making it bedroom level is. It works, but it's yeah, yeah. aesthetically a very different thing. You don't feel anything, it's not the same. That's right. And just out of interest, how have you got the AC30? What channel are we in? How loud is it set? Uh, at the moment, I've got the AC30 in the EF86 channel. Right. Um, and it is on about one third. Okay. Right, so this is, that's my normal gig volume. Not all AC30s right. have an EF86 channel, yeah. by the way. But, but you know, you get a very similar setup going yeah. into the, into the uh, top boost channel. Um, you know, one one way that I do like to run the AC30 is I'll go uh, I'll like output two into the normal channel and output one into the EF86 channel and, and swap them. Yeah. To swap the outputs. What are the differences roughly? Uh, the EF86 channel has got a bit more mid range, and it's it drives a bit harder. So yeah. an EF86 valve has got a lot more gain than yep. a stand 12x7. Um, they and are not interchangeable, by the way. No, just no, no. for anyone thinking you might want to stick an EF86 in your twelve, in your V112X7 it's slot. It's a different sort of valve. Don't do it. But uh, you can get amps modded, <coughs> um, which is, yeah. So anyway, the, what I found so interesting is, um, so I, I was using this board with my little Lazy J20 for a gig, and it sounded great. But really quiet gig. But the the, the J20, um, it's you know, it's a lower watt amplifier, and it's much. Uh, it compresses naturally much earlier on mm. than the AC30. So I had this in that amplifier, it sounded great. When I first started getting my sounds together with the Vox, um, it was so spiky and harsh, and I'm going, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm used to there being a differentiation between. You know the, the clean box, and the, but I don't remember it being so distinct. And I thought, man, you know, how loud does it have to be for this thing to start working? And it literally, it really isn't that much louder. So, a point of reference. I've started using this Bad Bob Boost. We were in um, near uh, Analog Man, Bethel, Connecticut. Bethel, that's it, Bethel, Connecticut. And we were having a jam at Mike's place, and you kicked that on with your Strat into the, um, what was it? Is that? It was a, uh, it was a silver face basement. That, right. And it was glorious. <laughs> so, I since bought one, because I, I just was like, oh, I, I've never been a fan of boost pedals, but it's like, yeah, that's the boost pedal for me. Yeah. In fact, I've got two. I've got one built into a, a Maxon OD9, and it comes after the OD9, that's an analog man thing, and I've got a standalone one as well. Yeah. So yeah, so <clears> I like I wasn't leaving without the NKT Sunface and then also without that boost. So anyway, this is the Let's hear some stuff. Right, this is the clean sound. That's it, that's me done, I am done, thank you, good night. It's just rock and roll. It is rock and roll. But it's, it's still really clean. There's yeah, so yeah. much definition. Oh, you say that. But it's... no, okay, it's, right, it's the bridge pickup on a Telecaster and I'm, I, and I've hit it, you know. So you are gonna get, but it's not, it's not distortion, you know, it's still. For me, the definition of clean there is that the dynamic range is yeah. all there, and you can hear that. For example, play. Give me a. Give me a bang a G chord a sec. <laughs> hear how the extra mids in that just push, just push, push, push. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. that that it, it, um, and actually, seeing as we're on that tip, before we move on. To uh, before we move on to before we move on to overdrive pedals, to put that in context, uh, Dan, give us that G chord again. Sorry. 
what I love about that is that even without anything, you've got your well, you've got three classic guitars there mm. that all sound like they sound like the guitar. Yeah, because yeah. it's right on that edge of uh, exactly, exactly. Which is what you're talking about. It's exactly what I'm talking about. The the thing with the AC30 though, that that edge, it. If I turn that down a millimeter, it's a different amplifier. Yeah. And I and I just it was so interesting because you know I hear people say you know AC30 is, a, is an awful amplifier with pedals or you know it's um you know for what it, you know there's a lot of people who love them a lot of people who just don't get them but where the magic happens with it is just that point because I can understand a fuzz going into a clean AC30 can be n harsh on the ears, but set up like this. Well, what, when you turn it up, it's a bit... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, different, different animal. Okay, so, the right, so this, is the, this is the... So I'm going to go from the clean. I'm laughing because he had instant guitar face. He turned it on, he went like that. <laughs> now, now what I noticed with that, when the amp was set up really clean, it was like, I, you know, I, it just wasn't working. Case in point, if you watch our uh, P90 show, which went live earlier today when we're filming this, but there's a show on P90s that we've done recently. Dan plays uh, Simon's 1954 Gibson ES125. Oh, oh, yeah, I do. I kick on the bad bob and it's awful and I kick it off pretty much straight away right. because the amp's not driving enough and it just sounds harsh. A bit like if you have a treble booster. I mean, that's not a treble booster, but it, a bit like if you have a treble booster into a clean amp. It's, yeah. So but the if combination that, of the two. Yeah, but if that amp is like a warmer, you know, like a tweed star thing or something that doesn't have that, yep. that top end, it's... You know, it's awesome. But, you know, when I was first getting the sounds together, I was like, nah. But as soon as I hit that point, and not a millimetre over, and I still had all the clean tones, and then I hit that, it's like all the top end of that suddenly makes sense. It mm. works with that natural compression of the amplifier. So, and I'm actually using the, um, the bad bob for, you know, a lot of the clean tone stuff. So if I just put on a bit of delay and reverb... Magic sound. I'm in heaven. And it's a band sound. There's bottom end there. Yeah, yeah. But it's not. It's not the kind of bottom end, bottom end we would get in this room, where we coupling two amps. Uh, yeah. You know, huge sort of blackface Fender style bottom end. It's mm -hmm. not that, but it's it's there and it's just enough to sit. On the subject of bands, uh, the hope for the TPS band is that when we move into our new premises, we will be able to start doing the odd band show to put some of these comments in context. So. Uh, yes, that will be coming. But yeah, so that's you know that's how I'm using the bad bob. Um, it's it's got that thing. It's got that fuzz thing. It's got that same sort of. Um, well, it's a transistor. It's, yeah. Design so, is it? So yeah, it's not so just like an op amp. Exactly. So the way it cleans up. Yeah, so um, one issue with strat single calls particularly when you turn the volume down as you get that immediate top end roll mm -hmm, off mm -hmm. and it preserves that for your, for your clean. Yeah, that's, and that's what I mean, that, that same sort of um, 
interactive content that like a good fuzz have or the uh, broadcast the broadcast exactly we're like we're becoming a couple good, Dan you man, realize this don't you I'm yeah. just finishing your sentences I wonder what it is with my brain because I'm just I'm the sort of guy <laughs> that would be having you know having a an argument with someone I leave the room then five minutes later I go oh if I haven't just said that <laughs> you know it sort of it does take my, my brain a little while to kick in anyway I know words I know the best words um, so that's um <laughs> Right, so this is <laughs> right DNM drive. Now, the way I use my DNM drive normally. Look at those guys. Look at that. They're, They're handsome, so happy. Handsome guys. Um, with the, I don't use a lot of game. Um, it's certainly into a situation like this, because the amplifier is is limiting, and it's got, and it's limiting in a really magical way. I just want to hit it. I don't need to hit it with a bunch of um, or you know, really limited stuff. I want to yeah, give yeah, the yeah. pedal a lot of headroom. That's a really important point. That actually, if your amp is um, overdriving and and is starting to get at that point where there's no headroom left, the last thing you want to do is hit it with a really gainy, super gainy pedal. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I know. I'm just repeating what he said. Yeah, but it, it's it, it bears it. But now with the with the DNM drive set up with this, I literally have on the boost. So I've got the gain quite low. Um, a little quite low and a tone and sort of off center, and that's going into the boost with no gain mm. and setting the tone and level. So there's so much dynamics there, but it's still got that, it's got that Vox top end still. And all of the guitar is still there. Exactly. That's just, I wasn't expecting it to be quite that dynamic, uh, you yeah, know, dynamic. Because you're so used to the idea that when an amplifier is working, you lose so much of that. And the whole point of this is, it's just got that, just tipping over to that point. Yeah, yeah. You know, because at, I guess the whole thing with this is guys who are playing, in bands that, that, and you know, not quiet bands either, bands that are rock and roll. And they've got to turn the amp up, the their AC30s up to a point that, that yeah. the amp makes sense. And it's awesome. But if then if you've got to go and turn down and try and do that quietly, yeah, it's yeah. such a challenge. Happens in both directions, doesn't it? My, yep. One of the reasons I particularly like high head room amps is because quite often, uh, playing in bands, especially when I was younger, when, when we played so much louder than we do now. Mm -hmm. If I had an amp that wouldn't, it would sound great, and then, the, then you know, second set, you get louder or whatever, I don't, I don't know, you get louder, and you turn the amp up, and it just, there's nothing there. Yeah. All it does is caves in, yep. and that's no good, so what do we need? Bigger headroom, yeah. larger amp. Yeah. So, while you're saying it can happen, you know, you get it to that sweet spot and you have to turn it down and all the feel goes away. Also, you get it to the sweet spot, you need to turn, turn it up, up, which of course is where this comes in. Yes, yes. So the, are you actually using the power station then? I'm using it to attenuate. I'm not using it because, yeah, I've, I've got the amp turned up and I'm attenuating that down. But I mean, when you play out, you're using the, you're using yeah. the power station. Yeah. So the benefit of that then is... If you did ever get into that situation where you needed to be a bit louder, exactly. you can just crank the power station up exactly. a bit. Exactly, exactly. And feel happy. Yeah, yeah. And you know, and there are other products out there that, that do that. We've had this on the show before. I, I think it's a fantastic yeah. thing. Um, and you know, it gives you that that uh, that flexibility so that you can take, you know, any amplifier that has got this issue. You know, and it sort of, you know, alleviates that. Um, yeah, the, the other thing is, you know, yes, it is it is clipping, but if you, you know, something like, um, this is the Condor, and I've set it up for this almost like a... Hang on, before you move on, can I hear the DNM drive with the strap just for a second? Yeah, you just, can. Just for a bit of a... Wow!
both sides of the DNM drive on mm-hmm. into a clipping Vox. It's not something you you would you would think. I would I would think it would just not be anywhere near as dynamic as that. Yeah. Yeah, because I know, I know we said it when you were playing earlier, but to actually feel it. Yeah. Okay. Hang and on, so hang on. Before we just, I'm, I'm intrigued by okay. this. Okay. I'm intrigued. wrong with that is uh, let's be honest <laughs> awesome awesome the honk the honk and you know so you know the ac <clears> theory, <throat> that's its natural element you know it, it barks like that but if you know set right with that natural bit of limiting it just it sits and that's it's such a happy place because there's bottom end there there's still plenty of top end um i was going to show you with the, the top end thing the, you know, like the head with the reverb then, you know, so you've got, you got DNM drive Which, going uh, into the, into oh, it's the fathom. In, in, that's the fathom, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So you've got DNM drive yep. going into the, you know, and out of this clip. <laughs> right? It's such a good sound. Such a great sound. But then you put the reverb on and you still get all the top end and clarity. <laughs> And normally in an amplifier that's that's when we think of attenuating an amplifier and it's it's hitting the rails, you you lose all that. Yeah, but because it's only attenuated a bit. It's, again, I'll say, repeat what I said towards the top of the video. You might, in isolation, you might think that's a bit of a, a spiky, but in a band, you're just going to hear it. You're going to hear it. Yeah. Killer. Um, another good example of that. So I've got the I've got the the Condor Chase Bus Audio. Man, I love this. Thing. I couldn't believe this. Absolute revelation earlier. Simon and I were both like, Nah, nah, no way. So you can set up. Uh, imagine an EQ pedal, and you can take, you know, you've got bass, middle, and treble, but then you can take the middle or the bass or the top end, and you can modulate it. So at the moment, I've got the, I've got the middle modulated. I've got it set um, quite a broad spectrum of, of mids modulating. And what you get is this. It is magic. For anyone not following, all that was happening there, the Condor is a programmable EQ pedal and it's taking a bunch of mid frequencies and it is, is it uh, affecting the amplitude of them or is exactly. it changing the frequency? No, it's, it's just turning the them up and down. You, so you can affect the frequency, but yeah. at the moment I've got the the ramp knob, which is a, it basically sets the speed and I've associated that ramp knob with the volume of the mids, yeah. the game of the mids, and now that those mids are attenuating, but I can take, I can associate that with um, the volume of everything, turn it into a tremolo pedal. I was going to say, I was about, about to say that if you think about what a tre- tremolo pedal is doing, it's turning all the frequencies mm-hmm. up and down. So it's not that. It's such a fine line, isn't it? <laughs> so I hadn't, I hadn't crossed my mind to go. Okay, well, if you just take a bunch of those frequencies, and you're going to get a similar effect, yep. Yep. and puts you into. A little bit of harmonic tremolo 
This with the, with the modulating the mids, it does. It sounds like harmonic tremolo. Because that's Beautiful. what harmonic tremolo is, yeah, right? It's it is. But then I can set the bass and the top end on it. You know, uh, I'm I'm blown away by this thing. It's, it's great. Too cool. Yeah, it's so great. it is simplistic. It, it it you can just do basic programmable EQ, presumably. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But you then can... in addition to that, you've got control in additional control over various parameters. Wow. Yep. And there's a there's a gain stage in there. It's like you know, filter. You make it sort of filtery, and you know, as a as an EQ boost and stuff, it's fantastic. But then be able to do things like that, you know. I'm, yeah, it's wonderful. Too cool. And uh, I suppose if you wanted to use it in a tremolo -y type fashion, you don't get some of the downsides of tremolo, which is the drop in level. I mean, I know all these things yeah, are, yeah. are fixable, but yeah. You, well, not only do you not get the drop in level, but you can set the frequencies, and you know to exactly what sort of tone you want when you mm. kick that on. It's very, very cool. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I've got, I've been able to get rid of the tremolo, a phaser, and a boost with that, you know. And sound, and it sounds unique into the... Yeah, it's all analog. It's funny, he sent me his excited text message going, this has turned up. I'm like, right, it's an EQ? <laughs> with respect to you, Joel. <laughs> you know, not understanding that it could, mm. it could do all this stuff. That's yeah. amazing. I'm still just, I'm still exploring it, but it's very cool. But yeah, can so can I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might have noticed there, just right at the beginning, I'm playing very softly and it was all dull and and then you just hit the guitar harder and all, it all comes back. The, di the dynamic range there is fascinating. It's, yeah. You, yeah can, you can just, you can really get into it and, yeah. uh, and you get something back. Yeah. That's, and... If you if you haven't, if, um, I don't know if the episode will have gone out yet. It might not have done. Dan and I have done a silent listening episode where we were forced to play silently for the day. And all I'm going to say is, if you have watched that or if you haven't watched it, it is the exact opposite of the emotion that I'm feeling at this second. That was hard. That was hard. Yeah. You know, I think the last couple of years being here, you know, what... Oh, I, we can I ask... violin, I would so be... <laughs> keep, keep playing, you just have well, to imagine okay, a so violin. I get asked all the time, why do your guitar sound so good? Because we play at a decent level. That's the very basis of it. You know, there's nothing, we're not doing anything special with the recording. There's nothing, you know, going on. Nothing clever, no nothing, post nothing clever at all. It's just, right, you get the amp sounding good, you, you make the effects sound. Use yeah. a reasonable guitar. Yeah, absolutely. But there's, you know, it's not rocket science. And when we had to, do, <laughs> we had to turn everything down and be really quiet, honestly, that was going to work. And I, I understand now that, you know, talking to some pit guys who've got to play through, you know, headphones and no sound on stage. And uh, it's really, really tough. I, I don't think I could do it. I, I couldn't do it. I don't know the notes and I can't read music. So I couldn't do it. Yeah, there's, but there's my get out of jail. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. And if I could, if I could do all that, I probably wouldn't be sat here with you going, schwang. Would I? I'd be off down the West End playing Oliver. 
Yeah, and you, you know, you'd be you'd be smoking and drinking and and you know, being basically not that there's anything wrong with that. Actually, there is. Um, I don't know. I like it. I like the dirty underbelly of the uh, yeah, yeah of the West End. Yeah, but you know what I mean. You'd be you'd be finding coping mechanisms. That's yeah. what I meant to say. Yeah. See, it takes me a while. Yeah. But I get there in the end. Yeah. Coping mechanisms, Michael. Okay. My coping mechanism at the moment is uh, a decent cup of coffee and some half-decent breakfast cereal. How's, how's your um, heart juice? Heart juice is good. We need to, okay. we need to finish this video. We're okay. going to get some more. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you can have some heart juice as well. I'd like some heart juice. It was left over from yesterday. Uh, we had a small um, malfunction with the corkscrew. Yeah. But uh, you, can, you can see our soul for that. That's had, like... 10,000 views it's on Instagram crazy. or something. Anyway, crazy. whatever. Uh, right, so... Follow um, us on Instagram. Um, of course, you know, set up with... Do you use that in conjunction with anything? Yeah, so which... Or the, just everything, the condor. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll stick it on. If, I'm, if I've got like a solo-y type thing going on, like a... Um, with the, the bad bob going into the touch drive... This is nice. Just gives it that bit of movement. Touch drive sounds. Yeah, yeah, it's spectacular. Epically good. <laughs> Have we got some weird harmonic thing yeah, going that's on? The, that's the output transformer working and doing its it? thing. Yeah, man. Ghosting thing. It's like the like we had with the Laney LA thirteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About to blow up, is it? No, no, it's that's it's in its happy place. Yeah, yeah, it's it's <laughs> that's it saying thank you. <laughs> mm. Mm. Okay, um, yeah, and another thing again, just to um, for a clean sound with a bit of the uh, the warp one chorus on. I'm playing that so that you can hear, because so many times with amps that are compressing, they, they, it's the top end is the first thing that you struggle with. Mm. But it's so clear and beautiful and, you know, ah, so you can put on a lovely bright chorus and you, you hear it rich and big. That, that's the hi-fi version. That's the hi-fi well, version. It? So it has all it's that. It's got all that, all that top end, so... Um, Yes. Uh, come on then, let's talk about fuzz. Okay. Um, uh, you know, 
fuzz. I had a bizarre comment today actually on the, on the video. It was, um, stop using overdrive and fuzz, heavy overdrive and fuzz, because you can't hear any difference in the guitars and amps. Should we lay waste to that assertion uh, yeah. at this moment, yeah, Daniel? for sure, for sure. Okay, so, Telecaster. Yeah, so uh, fuzz faces don't sound good into Voxes, apparently. Man. Oh, Rubbish. Man. C completely unusable fuzz face with a Vox AC30. How many times have I read that on forums? Oh, I'm a little emotional. But that's... It's, that sound, because I, I gigged for so many years in a loud band with that, you know, and I loved it so much. It was so great. And then being in that situation without the band quieter thinking you know yeah. what's happened because it's not a little bit different it's a world away you sure 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 but it is just it's just that point <clears throat> it's that it's not like you've got to turn it up to be really loud and that stuff's happening it's just that point where suddenly everything in an ac30 makes sense mm. you know just just love it i just love it all right then so that's a very vintagey 
type fuzz face yep. circuit. Yep. Mud Honey brings us forward a bit further, yeah. a bit dirtier distortion. It's um, there are similarities between this and a rat. Right. Um, this is the. We must do the rat show. We by must the way. do the rat show. This is the hand wired version uh, from our mates at T Rex. The Danish one. The Danish one. Um, Michael. Michael. I, I mean, look, that that guy is you know. I just he's just the coolest guy in the world. <laughs> uh, we had him on the show a little while ago. If you don't know um, who Michael is from T Rex, go and check him out because he's just a genius. Give him a hug. Yes. Um, yeah. Oh, so that was a papa. This is the this is the mud honey. Makes me think of that sound. It, I I love that thing. And like for that that messy high gain thing. crazy with the amount of gain there. I, I'm fascinated to uh, know what the recording machine is going to make of that. I'm slightly worried, not seeing any... Uh, oh yeah, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't seeing any wave on there, but uh, we are. Yeah, so, so there you go. AC30, super sparkly, bad bob clean, analog man, fuzz, down clean, fuzzy, filthy, 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 Mud honey, just awesome. Rocky goodness, rocky in, goodness, in between clarity the and dynamic and drive range. and the touch. Yeah, for different. All there. Yeah, it's all there. So, um, this is. I mean, so this is the board I'm using. Um, you know, for everything, it'll be. You know, that's really that's sort of my happy place. 
you know, that the AC30 and that. The analog band delay. Is there anything underneath? Uh, there, I've got space for one more thing. Right. I am tossing up a couple of ideas that I have for the moment, uh, but but we shall see. The, the great thing is that the Condor has taken off, you know, three pedals. So, that we, you know, one pedal has replaced three. So. And have you, you've got that, have you, oh, I don't, I don't even want to ask a question. The MIDI. You've got it MIDI'd? Uh, I do have it MIDI'd. I've got it set up to the favourite switch here. Yeah. So I've got... A bunch um, of presets. Bunch of, I've got like six sounds um, straight away. But I, I realised may... I was sinking down and, and about to expire because we started to talk about MIDI. So I'm, I'm just going to... I may do, I may do it, but I, um, I'm really... You know the face which is working for me at the moment. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, because um, how many does that give you? The face which gives me six. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I, I need a tremolo. That harmonic. Sorry, the, the the harmonic trem sound. I've got the normal trem, the boost, yeah. and variations of in between, and and maybe a bit of a filtery thing. Yeah. Um. There's some. You know, just what you can do with that. Being able to control that ramp knob and put that over, because you can have. You don't just have to have one knob. You can have multiple knobs all controlled at once. That's really clever. So, uh, yes. Um, yeah, but that's this is what's really doing it for me at the moment. And of course, the the Fathom reverb I just think is extraordinary. So the, what will come now is all the questions like, "Oh, don't you like your Lazy J anymore? Don't you like your Hampstead anymore?" Oh, and I already know what the answer is going to be. But what's the answer? So. Of course, I love them. Um, you know, I would. The lazy, the, the Hampstead was the amplifier that to me sounded like my Lazy J and the AC30 put together. Mm. You know, it's great. It's an amazing amplifier. Uh, in the context of what I'm doing now with the Spirits, um, this is the amplifier that you know, I've used on the albums and you know, and in the rehearsal. And I've just been reminded because it's been so long since I've used this in anger. Yeah. And it's like. Oh, I remember this. I, you know, I you also mentioned to me that it it, it it fits with Dave. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it fits with Dave, and and it fits with you as well, right? Because so last night we had you into the two rock, and sound from God, it's extraordinary. It's a pretty good sound. But if I had the same sound, yeah, yeah, it'd be it's too much. Yeah. Um, and I think. It, also worth saying that if I was to play, although sat here today, I'm thinking I absolutely could use this without any problems whatsoever. But probably once I get to a band, I'd be like, ah, that's not quite as that's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah, yeah. having grown up in, in a different world, yeah. and you'd probably be the same. Yeah. It's fast. I really hope we can explore some of that once we get into the new place. Yeah. About digging into that and understanding why certain things work for different players mm. and why you should never be afraid of it. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely, I loved the. So the, one of the, one of the big things I took away from the whole Graham Coxon thing was that, you know, it's really funny actually. The show that we recorded directly after Graham left the building, was one of my highlights of my life because I just felt I felt. <laughs> we've said this before. We've had so many amazing guitar players on the show, and half the time we're really inspired. Half the time we just want to go and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, just put everything on eBay. But after the Graham, and he, the whole experience with him was so freeing. And he just said, just be yourself. And be just, yeah. you know, and I, I, anyway, I love that. And, and this is the thing about me. I feel so connected with that sound. And certainly for the, you know, the spirits thing and with what we're doing, that's working. And you know, another slight little tangent before we, before we sign off is... One thing we get asked quite regularly is, how do I set my board up or my amp up so that when I change guitars, I can compensate for those changing guitars? Mm -hmm. Dan, how do you do that? Uh, so I use a three to one, and that just balances out the levels and everything. You, so you do actually do some level balancing? I do the level balancing with the with the Gretsch. Yeah. Uh, I don't need to do any level balancing between the Les Paul and the Telecasters, but absolutely yeah. with the Gretsch. Yeah. Um, my Strat has because it's a sustainer and it's you know it's you know it's got, it's not a really low output strat yeah it's got so a jb junior or something isn't it yeah, or a yeah, little, yeah. little 59 or exactly. something exactly and it's you know so that's fine but the gretch i do need to bump that up a bit yeah same um, same with my gretch yeah, yeah. but it's an, a, a what a sound it's incredible um but yeah that's you know 
But also, sometimes it's not necessarily a bad thing for there to be a bit of a differentiation between the, the levels of guitars. The reason I ask the question is because I want my guitars to be different levels and different right. sounds. I yeah. don't want to plug my Strat in and it sound exactly the same as the 335. That, yeah. that would be a complete waste of well, time. Well, if, if the levels were the same, they wouldn't sound the same, but they would dynamically... You would, wouldn't you would, make any sense yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah sure. Because they, they, they excel in different areas. Yeah. Or at least they, they sound loud in different areas. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, it's fascinating. Anyway, there we go. Killer. Killer. I think that's the best I've heard that sounding in here. Oh, man, it's, it's so good. And we haven't really used it with the attenuator before, have you? So no. you had to mod it a bit to make it work with the attenuator because you needed a speaker out. Yeah, so I put a little speaker out on there and, you know. I mean, I'd, if one thing with amps, I don't mind getting it back. And <laughs> that's, um, Which you shouldn't do, by the way, because no, you no, can kill no, yourself. No, so let's that. just do the health and safety thing, yeah, yeah. unless you know what you're doing. Right, there we go. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. As I said before, um, if you've gone onto our site and bought a T-shirt or bought a DNM drive or bought um, spats, then we want to say thank you. I'd love to do some spats, actually. <laughs> our faces <laughs> on relative... Well, Simon and I are going, what are spats? I think, aren't they things that fit on your shoes? No, no, spats are like... Um, are like uh, Little like fish? training, training pants. Oh right. You know. I think we might have a we might have a cultural. Uh, no, you um, it's like uh, have you ever watched any um, um, MMA? Funnily enough, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> but they, that's what they they train in, and just put our face on each butt cheek. Okay. Uh, there you go. Nice. Be great. I um, thought they were things that went over your shoes. They might be. They yeah. might be. Anyway. Um, I, I hope I've got that right. I'm sure I have. <laughs> it's going to be really funny if you haven't. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, so anyway, just saying, massive. Th it, we really appreciate it, guys. But um, you know, it's it's it's, it's special and, and appreciated. Uh, thank you to our preferred retailers as well in the UK and Europe. Is Anderson's Music of Guildford, Surrey. I uh, caught up with Lee last week at the launch of the Grey Guitars because <laughs> Lee is now. Um, has got some stock of grey guitars in. He's also got stock of Hampstead amps. There you go. He sent me an email today and said, if you would like to uh, mention on your lovely show that I now sell Hampstead amps, yeah. that just, would be uh, that would be appreciated. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Do you remember my synth show? I've seen my, that for ages. That's, yeah, that's my. Well, the guys have it next door. Right. Because they love it. They come in here and grab it to take it next door and play. But it's, it's great, great guitar. But anyway, yes. So I, I caught up with Lee last week at that event and um, and Danish Pete. And uh, yeah, it was great. Good to see him. And so it's good, good people. Good people. Uh, in Australia. Uh, Pedal Empire of uh, Qu Brisbane, Queensland. Yes. And uh, another another Hammer legend. And of course, uh, in the USA. Uh, Joe Leach and gang at Rift City Music. Yeah. Are we I want to go back out there. Yeah, we should go back out there. Definitely. We should cool. definitely go back out there. Joe's uh, launching some online content um, that's going to be in broadly in a magazine format, I believe. Uh, I'm going to be doing some writing for oh, it. Oh, cool. So are you, actually. Uh, so am I. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, keep an eye on that. Check the Rift City website and um, have a look at the stuff they're doing. Also, tremendously good people. Tremendously good. There you go. Thank you guys so much. And we'll see you next week. Okay. Cheerio. Bye. Cheerio.